Welcome back to Cinemaflex Music Picks. I'm Davey, your host with the most, the beast with the least. Oh, the least I can do today is... The least. We're going to have a look at a new Blu-ray of King Kong Lives. The classic. <coughs> classic film from 1986 where did it all go wrong with my life anyway I thought we could use a break from all the music talk recently you know I've been neglecting the films and uh, I liked talking about the uh, the box set the other day from Echo G. Murphy so I thought I'll give you a little review of uh, new from Umbrella Entertainment down in Australia uh, hello to all the convicts out there. Oh, sorry, they're not all convicts. Some of them are cricketers as well. Um, the Good Folks Umbrella have released on their Beyond Genres line, King Kong Lives. Uh, snazzy cover there. I'm not really sure why it's Beyond Genres. It's, it's a sci-fi movie. It is when you see it, even though it's King Kong, it's a sci-fi movie. Uh, special features, audio commentary by Ray Morton, who wrote King Kong, The History of a Movie Icon. Interview with miniature supervisor, David M. Jones. I think that means he supervised the miniatures on the film. I don't think he's a miniature supervisor. You know, a small person. Uh, John Gellman lives, a video essay on the director by Stephen Vag. Uh, original theatrical teaser trailer and stills gallery. <sighs> so, I have seen this film a few times. Mm. And, uh, it's a nice cover. I like that. I like that a lot. But um, I've seen this film a few times. First of all, how weird is it that the production notes just go around the, the box and then on the inside? strange um, and I've, I've never known what to make of it so it's a sequel a direct sequel to the 1976 King Kong with Jeff Bridges and Jessica Lange and that was a remake of course of the 1933 um, Miriam Cooper Fairy that one so it ends the same King Kong shot down this time from the Empire State Building was that or was it the two towers? Anyway, shot down from some big building in New York. And, um, yeah, truly, it was beauty killed the beast. We know the King Kong end, right? He's not dead. King Kong has been in a coma for ten years. And a scientist has been working on him. No ordinary scientist. Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor herself. So she's escaped the Terminator and now she's working on King Kong. And the goal is to give King Kong a heart transplant. They've built an artificial heart, but they need blood for the transfusion to do them. Which I can identify with because I'm having transfusions at the minute. Not this very minute, um, but anyway. So they give uh, orders to this guy who's like a hunter, you know, go and, go, and get, go and get another Kong, you know, see if they've got one in the shops. And 20 minutes later he finds a female Kong, Konga, 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 um, and uh, they bring her back. And uh, the transfusion goes all well, um, the heart transplant works, but Conga lets out a yell and that awakens the fresh new hearted King Kong who hears a female cry from one of his own kind and that sets him on the rampage. So he's just woke up, he's a little bit horny. And wouldn't you know it, the army are on his case straight away. 
straight away. He's not been up for 10 minutes. After 10 years of being brain dead, all of a sudden he's looking for a mate and the army are after him in the space of two minutes. It's um, it's no great spoiler to say this is the film where we do have a love scene between Kong and female Kong. One for the furries out there. Um, and we do indeed have the world shot as pregnancy um, because Mrs. Kong gives birth to baby Kong, Kong Jr., Donkey Kong. Um, and that that happens all within the space of a couple of days, it seems. So the pregnancy cycle for a Kong, which we can't call a gorilla or an ape because pregnancy cycle's too weird, must be a couple of days. And the shit goes down from there and the army kill everybody. Blah, 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 blah. The end. Okay, so we know how a King Kong movie's going to end. Okay. Not well for Kong, put it that way. Okay for Mrs. Kong and the baby, but not well for Kong. It's a terrible film. It's an abomination. It's stupid, it's dumb, and it's absolutely brilliant. Everybody's miscast. Linda Hamilton's playing it as if, you know, this is Shakespeare and she's got her big chance. Um, what's his name is our ostensible main character but he's so forgettable and bland uh, Brian Kerwin yeah that's, a, that's Brian there in the hands of Kong doesn't that excite two pictures um, and um, we get ridiculous scenes like to transplant the heart into Kong, they need a crane to do it. Wouldn't a crane be rather, wouldn't that just cut right into the, I don't know, very soft crane. And you get massive uh, comedy sized versions of standard medical tools like pincers and you know, all that kind of thing, chest cutters. Huge giant versions of them, looks like uh, Honey I Shrunk the Kids. Starring King Kong. Um, the army are wonderfully over the top. The minute they hear there's a Kong on the loose, let's get him, boys! Yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, and actually, it's a lot of fun. This is 0% uh, on that they're rotten tomatoes. And I can see why, because anybody giving this a good review would be out of their nut. But at the same time, I think it's terrifically fun. I really do watched it again last night and I still think it's a lot of fun. Whereas, perversely, I don't like the 1976 version with Jeff Bridges. I think that's really dull. I think that's a really crap remake of the 33 classic. Um, you know, turning uh, the story into Jeff Bridges, some kind of eco-warrior. And, you know, it didn't do anything new and exciting with the story at all. At least Peter Jackson's version turned out into more of a spectacle, had more time on Skull Island, I guess. Kong Island. Um, but th this film just knows exactly what it is. B-movie schlock, and it plays exactly like that. Um, every, everybody th that thinks they're in a better movie than they are adds to the schlocky horror picture show that it is. I really enjoy it. And I, I prefer it over the King Kong from 76. I really do. Is it as good as any other King Kong in terms of quality? No, it's probably the worst Kong. Probably, including the Japanese ones. But it's just fun. It's up there with um, um, Skull Island and uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, both versions, just for being pure, unadulterated fun. Um, and I think, I think, the one that I've did forget is uh, the King Kong from the 1934, the uh, Kong Jr. Um, it's, it's as good as that, really, in terms of knowing what you are, getting in, getting out again, having it done. 
Because I love that second Kong film from 34 that barely anybody remembers. It's got really great character art for what's his name, Robert Armstrong's character. Um, who, you know, he, he was the one that caused the whole thing to his way to kill the beast. And it's got a really great arc for him of redemption. But this took 10 years to get the sequel done and no, no, I just don't see how. I mean, it looks worse than the original despite the fact they had years more time to get it done. Um, here's so, here's what you get with this. Uh, you get some art cards. Uh, that's quite nice. Looks more like Skull Island, isn't it, with the helicopters? Uh, on the back you get uh, image of Kong. Um, in France, it was apparently just called King Kong 2. Il revient, il n'est pas content. The monkey isn't happy. Uh, and here's the American poster. America's biggest hero is back. And he is not happy. When was King Kong America's biggest hero? Ever? Move aside, Captain America, eh? You've got King Kong at your side. Um, and here's some of the Asian cards. This one's gorgeous, actually. Look at that. If you look that good in the movie, this would be awesome. Yeah, maybe, maybe not this one so much. Uh, last one. Oh, it's more of a lobby card. It's quite ferocious looking. Good set of gnashers on him, eh? And you get a poster so that you can put it on your wall. Because that's what, you know, it's the America's greatest hero one. So you can, you can put that on your wall next to all your other King Kong uh, Lives posters. Or buy two copies so you can get the reversible uh, Japanese one. <sighs> Let's come to this. Reviewing King Kong Labs. But it is fun. Tremendous fun. Linda Hamilton's in it. There's three Kongs. They all look crap. But there are three of them. Something else nice to say about it. The transplant seems quite funny. In an unironic way. Picture looks good for a bad movie. Umbrella have done a good job. And apart from that, I don't recommend this movie to anybody. But if you do like bad movies that are kind of fun, but they're awful, but they're kind of interesting, but they're really bad, but they're kind of fun to watch, but you should never watch them, but you should give them a go, then I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Friday night, few beers, few something else's yeah you'll have a bit of fun with king kong lives you'll have a bit of fun with king kong lives just don't go expecting classic kong king kong lives matter this was all i could think of to review today i'm sorry it's what i watched last night so i thought i'd better review it Anyway, out now from Umbrella Entertainment. Umbrella, I'm sorry, I haven't done a very good job selling this for you, but hey, you're the ones that released King Kong fucking Lim. Not my problem. Well, it is. I'm daft enough to buy it. Anyway, stay very safe out there. Beware of giant monkeys, creepy scientists, and apes on the run. Apes are popping. And, uh, well, 
love and mercy.